Hey, Stacy. We're a few minutes early. I'm going to give people time to get here. I'm just setting up last minute things. Get all of my window sizes adjusted here. And I've got one more thing I need to pull up. Hey, Sue. Hey, Rana. Hey, Alice. I'm still setting up. I'm just got here a little bit early so that anybody has any questions about projects they can ask and let me go ahead and pull up hey Sue Sue B and Sue C um, let me go ahead and swap over to winter winter chicken dinner so people can see that in case they do not have a number and I'm going hi Joan I am going to explain a little bit about um, a couple of changes I made on winner winner chicken dinner. Uh, nothing major. Uh, if you are the winner, you will now go to my website, craftingwithapril.co, and claim your prize. I will message you a code so that you're not charged anything. You won't have to put in your credit card or anything. You're just going to claim your prize, fill in your address, and it's going to shoot it over to me so I can print a label. And it's going to make my life a lot easier. How to save private and design space? Sure, Alice. That's, that's very easy. We can do that. Um, let me fix this so I can see my whole chat. There we go. So, and I'll explain. So, if you're the winner of winner, uh, winner chicken dinner, you'll you'll know that you do have to be present to win. Most of you know that. If you do not have a number on the screen, let me know. Um, you can only win four times in a four, uh, two times in a four week period. So, Claudia, if you're listening, you're out there. You are not eligible this week. And let's see, one, two, three, four. I think you will be eligible next week because this one will drop off. So, um, just so we know. But you can keep your number. You're not going to lose it. Hi, Kathy. Kathy, you can watch it back on the uh, replay if you need to. Um, so, stay safe. Don't let your um, computer get fried from lightning or anything. I just went through that last month. I lost a TV, a surround sound, a chair, and a tree uh, from lightning. So, yes, Claudia is very lucky. She's very, very lucky. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up, and we're. I'm going to. Um, you guys can tell me if you don't have a number because you know when you get here if you come often if you have a number or not. Uh, Rana has, yep, you have one. You haven't seen Rana in a while, but you still have seven, Rana. All right, let me switch over to Design Space and show really quickly Alice how to do that. So, um, Alice, when you have your project up and you go to Save, when you click on Save, if you do a Save As, if it's the first time you've saved, let's just start from scratch and do that. Let me just do that really quick, just so you don't get confused. I'll show you both ways. Hi, Barb. Hey, Deborah. First time here, Deborah? Yay! Hopefully, you're a member of one of the uh, Facebook groups. If you are, you're eligible for winner winner chicken dinner. And I will show that to you. Let me get signed in here really quick. And I'm going to go to new project. 
and let's just I'm just going to put in a shape and we're going to pretend Alice that this is your uh, new project and you're ready to save it okay you're going to come up here and click save right here public is automatically marked if you do not want that to be public then you unmark that and public doesn't really mean public okay um, and I'm going to explain that so you can uncheck that and name it whatever you want and hit save now and you can try this for yourself that project number is 10704572 and I can give you that project number and you can click on it and you cannot open it it's not going to let you open it in no way shape or form okay if I do a new project and I put in a shape and I come up here and I hit save and I do heart and I leave that public and hit save now I can share that but the only way that I can share that is by giving you guys the link or the number at the end then you can click on it and you can open it without that number without the link you can't open it when you open it it's opening up in your design space not mine it's opening up in yours so if I were to it's just the same as if I go and get a make it now project if I come in here and I get this make it now project and I want to save it look there's no save option I can't just make a change to this and and make this anything that I want to and then hit save it's not gonna let me do that why because that file is not my file that file belongs to somebody else it belongs to Cricut or whoever made that project or if Alice sent me that link that's her project and it's not going to allow me to make changes and save them when it's hers okay so the only way that I can do it at that point is to do a save as and then save that and I can save it as public or I can save it as private doesn't matter without that link nobody's going to get it and the changes that I made to that file without the link so when you open up when you open up a project remember you're opening that in your computer and your design space you are not opening somebody else's design space it is their file that they created and chose to share but you can not and it's the same thing as opening up a make it now project in design space no Kathy it cannot anything that you have uploaded if it's a pattern if it's anything other than a font you cannot share it if you upload a font and you have not flattened it as an image and it is uploaded as a font then you can share it um, for instance let me just go back over here I'm going to leave that page don't need it um, if I come over here and I put in some text and I'm just going to type the word font and I you may or may not have a font that I choose on my computer I'm gonna pick system font so I make sure I don't pick a Cricut font here um, well I said I was there we go uh, so I come in here and these are all my fonts that are on my computer and let's say I use this font right here with the music and I want to share this project I can share it and you can open it okay you can open that without any problem however you're going to get a pop-up saying that this is the font that I used for that and if you do not download that font from wherever it is that I got it or where if you have it then it's going to change the font when you go to make it it's not going to let you use that however if I take this and I come over here and I weld it it is no longer a font it is now an image I can share that and you can open it
Does that make sense? Because now it's an image, but it is not an uploaded image. It's an image I created in Design Space from a font. So then you would get this, and it would cut just like this. But if you don't have that font, and I didn't weld it, you're going to be prompted to download that font if you can find it. Yes, very tricky. If I upload a pattern and I change, and I come over here and I say I want to make this print, and I want to use a pattern, it's going to take just a second for that to load. If I choose this uploaded pattern here, I can't share this project anymore. It's never going to let me share it because you don't have that pattern and I uploaded it. However, if I use my collections and my filters and I use access and I pick an access image, then I can share it. But there's a trick to that too. The trick to that is if you are on mobile, you're not going to be able to open it because I used a pattern and mobile does not support patterns. So sometimes you'll get a project and it's all access images, but you're not able to open it unless you're on a computer and that will be why. You can save it and um, save it to the cloud and then save it to your projects, I think, and you might be able to open it. I don't think they changed that, that yet, though. I don't think you can. Hi, Claudia. So that's the, the difference on sharing. Just because it says public doesn't really mean it's public. It just means it's public if you share it public. Now, another thing about that, if I come in here and I edit this, and try to add a photo. When I add that photo, it's visible to others. Um, then it becomes public in the community. Okay? It, that would make it public in the community at that point when I add those photos. So that's the only time that you have to worry about your file going public without, your, without you sharing anything because when it's visible to others and you've got a photo in there, at the end it's going to ask you to share it to Facebook or whatever, but it's still going to put it on the community ribbon unless you turn that visible to others off. You have to click edit and you have to turn that off if you add a photo or it's going to end up in the community ribbon. And that community ribbon, uh, close without saving, that community ribbon is, it's probably going to make me log in again because I accidentally did a private window for some reason. I don't know why it made me do that. It's a little slow. Yep. And let's see. View all, and when you go up here, you can see Cricut Community. This is where these are people who have shared their projects, put in their photos, and shared them with people just like you and I um, so that we can make their projects. Okay, so if you put that on and it's visible to others, and you add a photo, it's going to end up in here. It may not be on this ribbon where you can see it right off because thousands of them can get loaded in, in a minute and bump everything down. So um, the community is completely forever changing daily. All right. Let me switch back over to winner, winner, chicken dinner. So anybody that needs a number there can get that. Let's see, let me just what, leave the page. Thank you. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Claudia, I, I mentioned earlier you've won twice in the last four weeks. You're not eligible this week. Your name is blocked out until next week. And then you'll be eligible again. Because the last 
three, well, the, I took the last three. This will be the fourth. The other fourth didn't have your name on it. So you've won twice in the last four weeks, so you are not eligible this week. Congratulations on your wins, by the way. Anybody that needs a number, there are none left in the B column. There are a couple left in the I, a couple in the N, some in the O, and some in the G. So if you don't have a number, Yeah, Allison, any time um, that you need a question answered, don't hesitate to message one of us. We'll be happy. If you upload an image from Google, all right, we already answered that for Kathy. All right, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, no, ma'am, so you can't. She still owns that number. <laughs> that is still her number. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> It would be nice. That's a, that's a hot number. Everybody wants Claudia's number. <laughs> and again, you have to be present to win for winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I will take numbers for the next 15 minutes or so, guys. So if you need a number, you don't have one, and you're just coming in, you just let me know, and we'll switch over so you can take a look um, at that. Next, I want to go ahead and... I know I had this up. I, for some reason, it doesn't want to. There it is. Boom. We are going to do some. I don't. I don't need that. We are going to pull our Patreon winners for the month of September. Let me come over to here and get my random number generator. I rebooted just before. I forgot to pull some things up. I rebooted just before I came online just so I would have a fresh browser and everything and fresh connection, and I forgot to change some of that. Okay, so for our happy mail, I'm going to put in number two because one is up here, and we have everybody's name is in here, the correct number of times they're supposed to have it, to 137. So it's going to be two to 137 and here we go I don't know uh, Sue I've been looking for that as well I will continue to look I was pretty sure that I had it in the header um, that we covered where let's generate number 24 on the happy mail so who is on line 24 Cindy King Cindy King, I will be sending you a code, and you will go to my site, craftingwithapril.co, and claim your prize. And the instructions are there, and I will also include instructions in that message. Deborah wants number 27 on winner, winner, chicken dinner. Sure. I uh, I don't know how to say your last name. Servred? I probably slaughtered that. Uh, so Cindy King is our Happy Mail Patreon Happy Mail winner for September. And let me save this so we don't lose that and make sure that I put number 27 in the bucket. It is in. Now we are going to pull our $20 gift card winner for our patrons, and that is going to be number one, because I don't have a header row here, to number 425. And we are going to generate a number, number 68. And the number 68... Drum roll, here we go. Where is it? Rhonda Morales is our winner. And Rhonda, if you're not here, I will uh, message you and you can tell me 
where you want that gift card from. Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, anything I can get online. And now we're going to go for our $25 gift card winner. And this is going to start on line number one to 232. One oh three. Drum roll. Rashonda Sandler Hunt. Rashonda, same thing. I will message you and find out what gift card you want, and you can let me know, and I will get that to you. And let me save that. I don't want to lose my information there, and get rid of that. Yeah, Deborah, I, I'm sometimes pretty good with names, but that one's got me stumped. I don't know if it's Sivrid, Sivrid. I'm I'm not sure. That that one that one got me. I don't usually get stumped that badly, but that one's got me. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get started on our projects. I'm going to switch over and show you what uh, winner winner chicken. Severud. Severud. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> See, I told you I slaughtered it. <laughs> right, Sue? <so, laughs> so let me uh, transition over. I could s come over and say, hi, everybody. We're going to get started here. We've got a couple of projects we are going to. I'm going to show you how to use a font that I found on Defont.com. It's free. It's called the Pop-Up Font. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to use that and I'm going to show you how to fold up the napkin card and the file has been loaded to the design file for all the patrons. If you're not a patron, you can uh, recreate it pretty simply. Uh, you just need to make sure your lines are straight. And we are going to put together the Halloween card. Hi Nancy. Hi Vicki. So let's go ahead and come over to the project camera and some of you may know um, that I clearanced out my store simply because product was not moving fast enough and I need my storage space so I kind of clearanced out everything I had a few items left and I'm going to use those items for giveaways and things like that um, so what little bit of stuff I had left then they'll be up for grabs um, through it through the weeks so and I also am not going to be selling art glitter glue any longer. Uh, today was the end of that. Um, simply because, number one, storage, shipping issues uh, with the cold weather coming on. And also, recently, art glitter glue. I had contacted them previously, and they told me there was no shelf life on the glue. Now they have up on their website that there is a shelf life of one year. So, um, I don't want to be in that situation where I order $600 worth of glue and it doesn't move and then I can't sell it because it's past its shelf life. Um, so, for that reason, I am not going to sell it anymore. But, if you want to buy it, you can still buy it straight from Art Glitter Glue. That way you know what they're selling is fresh product. I am not an affiliate. I don't earn anything off of that. But you can purchase it directly from them. And um, it's the same price. The price. Because they will not allow us to sell it for less than what they retail it at. So, and that's why I never could put it on sale. So it makes no sense for me just to do it. Um, because I'll, I'm just being the middleman and paying for the shipping. So, and then it's going to sit on my shelf until it's bought. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Karen. So, therefore, you still have access to it. You're still going to be able to get it. You can get it on places like Amazon. Occasionally, it's on Prime. You can find it on Prime there. Most of the time, not. Um, if it is, then they've got it marked up. Um, so, check your prices at Art Glitter before you buy it somewhere else. Um, Best Deals, also, good place to buy it. You can go in there, and they pull up all the sites that sell it and show you the varying prices. But you will never get it for any less than what Art Glitter has it because Art Glitter does not allow its retailers to sell it for less 
than what they retail it at. If somebody is doing that, they're breaking Art Glitter's rules. And they will get caught and they won't be selling that long. So, all right. So that got all of that going. This week for um, Winter Winter Chicken Dinner, you are going to get some Art Glitter glue and a tip, the two ounce. And your choice of either, I think this is butterfly swirl, butterflies in the corner, uh, butterfly corner, or this um, Leone set of embossing folders. Now, these are just a little bitty short. I have a set of these. I love them for tags. I like to make out my tag or have my Cricut write my tag. Then I like to flip it over and run it through the cuddle bug and emboss it after it's been written. Really, really, really cute. Mini dye ink cubes. Blitzy, Stacy. Um, Blitzy carries them. Scrapbook.com. Uh, I don't know if it'll let me give you. No, it's going to take that link away from me. Uh, if you look in the description below the video, there's a link for Blitzy. There's a link. These are my affiliate links. Um, if you purchase through those, I do earn a small commission that allows me to bring you guys videos and tutorials and helps me buy my extra supplies for testing the uh, files that I give to you guys. So, um, but the links are there, scrapbook.com, Blitzy. Look for the Gina K's. Gina K's, um, let's see, Gina K, Tim Holtz, The Distress. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Karen. Um, you can find those little bitty ones there. They have the small ones. Uh, Stampin' Up. I know we have Stampin' Up distributors in our Patreon group. If you're a Patreon Stampin' Up distributor, you can post your link and help Stacy out. I think they have the small cubes as well. So, several places you can buy those. Check Amazon too. You never know. So, here's our winner, winner, chicken dinner numbers. We have those going. So, the winner is going to get the art glitter glue and the tip, and then their choice of one or the other. You do not get both. So, and we will draw at some point throughout the night. This is the pop up font. This is free from defont.com. I'm going to switch over really quick and show it to you guys. Um, come over here for the available numbers I will take numbers for the next four minutes so anybody that needs a number that doesn't have a number that's here right now go ahead and let me know from what you see on the screen which number you want I know Lucy you first time here you don't have a number You have to be present to win, and you have to be a member of the group. And that number is going into the bucket, number 45. Karen, I guess you have a number. Karen Wrigley, 66. Let me throw that one in as well really quick before I go over and show you guys on the font. That's in. Hi, Deborah. Deborah, do you have a number? Yes, you have 55. You're in. So I think that's about it on the numbers. That's all the new people I see. So let's go over to Defont. Let me save that. Don't want to lose anybody's numbers. And on Defont.com, if you guys go over here, and type, I want to go over this too. If you notice right down here, you see nothing. But if you pick anything in, let's just say handwritten. And then you want to see what your text will look like. You can type it in down here. Your preview tool will pop up once you have selected any category. doesn't matter which one you select, anything and then hit submit. 
then you can see what your text will look like that you typed into that box in every font. Okay? And I'm going to go over to Pop-Up because I know that's the name of this and I can search the name of the font. And right here we have the Pop-Up font. Hi Catherine. Hey Carrie. Uh, you need a number that's for uh, winner winner chicken dinner. That's for a drawing, Carrie. Uh, these are the available numbers. We have one minute left for you to pick. And then it's cut off for the evening. We have 16, 22, 31, 39, 41, 46, 48. 56, 57, 59, 62, 70, 71, 73, and 74 available. 70. You have to be present to win, and you have to be a member of one of my groups or be a Patreon supporter. Tara wants 16. And it is now 7.15, and that is cut off. So let me throw 16 and 70 into the bucket. There's 70. There's 16. And that is the end for the night. Uh, file. I'm going to save. And we will draw at some point in the evening. You have to be present to win to claim. So here is the font on DeFont. Um, and it's called Pop-Up. I don't know if you guys have seen in Design Space, we have some of the cards that do this that pop up. And they're already done for us. But sometimes, I know, we, you know, we just like to customize, right? So we don't always want to say happy birthday. We may want to say something differently. I'll have to get rid of those. Did I not save it? I did not save it, so let's just do a new. So what you're going to do to use this font is you're going to go to the font and you're going to click download. And then if you're on a Windows computer, it's going to download. Um, if you're using Google, bottom left-hand corner, once it's done, you can open it up and install it. You just double click on it and install it. Uh, you, some computers, depending on your computer settings, you may have to right-click and extract all. On my Windows computer, I don't. I just double-click the zip folder, double-click, and then find the font and click on it and click Install. Um, with a Mac, you've got a download um, that comes in. I'll just go ahead and do it right here. And then it tells you that it's downloaded. It had a little arrow there. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. And it installs, when I click on it to install, it installs it into my font book. And then when I log into Design Space, um, it's there for me. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select text and type in whatever it is that you're going to make. Well, I can't type, but we all know that you're going to get your text. Then you're going to come up here and select your font. And I know that this is a pop, the pop-up font, so I'm going to search for it. And there it is. And I'm going to select it. And you just don't want to cut it that way because it's just going to cut like it is. You have to attach it to something. So if you have, say, a 5 by 7 card, I'm going to say you want to make this insert probably a half inch smaller. So let's just go ahead and we'll put our card in there, which if I was doing 5 by 7 would be 10 by 7. And then lock it back. I'm going to change this to a color so you guys can see it. Arrange. I'm going to move that to the back. And then I'm going to need an inset. So I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to make that probably a half inch smaller. Um, in both directions, so that would be 9.5 by 6.5. And then I'm going to lock that back. And let's just make it pumpkin orange. Range, move it to the back. Oop, there we go. 
So now I would have this inset in there. And you're going to want to score this if you're opening. Um, most likely you would be opening top to bottom. So this is the way that you would do that. You're going to get a shape, get your score line, rotate it 90 degrees, make it 7 inches because that's our width. Select the both and align center. I'm not going to attach it. I just want to know where the center of my card is. Okay. Then you're going to take, I didn't want to move that. Undo. There we go. I'm going to group this just so I don't move it. Well, arrange, move that to the back. I didn't pick everything, did I? Group. There we go. So you're, you've got that there. You've got that score line. You're going to want the top of your letters right here. If you guys can see that, let me bump this up just a little bit. Is that better for you guys? Hi, Joanne. So you're going to line that up on that score line. You want that back piece to be there, and I'll show you when I go over to the project camera why. So you're going to align that, and you're going once you have your text in there, align, and you're going to center it horizontally. And then what I did is I duplicated my score line, and you just want to put this on the one. So I need to make that 6.5, and I need to duplicate that again, and I'm going to bring it up right at the center. Just right there on top. Then I'm going to bring this one right down here at the base of my letters. I'm going to select that score line, my text, and my second score line. I'm going to align and center horizontally and group. Okay, you can even attach, doesn't matter at that point. Now I'm going to ungroup this. I just wanted a place that I could see it. And I'm going to put my letters back to the front. I'm going to select them and my orange card, align, center horizontally, and attach. So now I have the score line right in the center where it's supposed to score for the center of my card. That's going to be the top score line. I have the score line at the base of my letters. And then I have the score line for my card. And I'm going to align, center and attach that. So now when I put my card together, that is going to line up in the center and be where it needs to be. Now let's go over to the project camera and I'll show you how it's folded. So once you've done that, the top score line you are going to valley fold. The bottom score line you're going to valley fold. Across the top of your letters where it cuts the dashes, you are going to mountain fold. But in between, you're going to valley fold them. And it helps if you fold them back and forth a couple of times. Don't pay attention. I broke my L. I was trying to fix it. You have to tear out on some of your letters. You have a little piece to tear out. On these letters, like these with the holes, all I did was fold it to the back and glue it down. You don't have to tear those out in chance tearing your letters. There are only a few where you actually have to remove that piece. So then this is going to go into the fold of the card right here. And then this is going to go in just like this. So once you have it in the fold, then when they open it, you have that pop-out effect. You would probably glue these pieces down. I would. All the pieces here at the back, you can glue those down. Just make sure that you're getting the pop effect when you open it. Okay? Actually, I said that wrong. That first score line, I apologize guys, where I said put the score line at the top, you need that score line at the top. 
but your score line that matches the one on your base card needs to be across the top of your letters. I was wrong there. So add a third one across the top of your letters because that's it lines up with these pieces here and those are the pieces that need to be in the center of your card. I apologize for that. These pieces need to be glued to the center of your card. That way when you open it up you get that pop effect. This is glued to the front, this is glued to the back, these pieces are glued to the center score line of your base. That way you get that pop effect. Does everybody understand that one? Okay, next we have the napkin fold card. Everybody's been asking about that. On this one, a couple of people asked me about paper. This was the back-to-back -back Bow Bunnies uh, Madeline. And this was the Elegance, the 12-inch Madeline Elegance. So if you want that, I don't know if this paper's discontinued or not, guys, but you might be able to find it on Scrapbook or Blitzy or Amazon. Um, it is an older paper. I've had it so for a few years. Hey, Sheila. So this card has a belly band. This card is uploaded, I believe, to... I don't remember. It's either the exclusive or the designs tab, but it's very easy to recreate. I just made a belly band, um, and that is in the card. This one was not quite wide enough or large enough. I did enlarge it in the file, so you guys are good to go. You won't have that problem. And then it just slips over the card, and you need it to be wide enough. It's going to seem like it's awfully wide in there, but you need it to be wide enough to hold this stuff down. Okay, so that's why it's so large in the file. This is just basically an 11 and a half by 11 and a half paper because that's the largest we can cut. Personally, when I make these cards, I would prefer them to be smaller than this. So you can adjust the file, just make sure that you select all, group it, and size it at that point because if these lines are off, it's not going to line up. Okay? So the first thing you do after you've cut it. And don't put any of your decorative pieces on yet. Save that for last. You are going to, there's a score line here and a score line here. You are going to fold that. And I fold that both ways. Then there's one here. Fold it both ways. Then there's another one. If you rotate 90 degrees, there's two more long ones. Fold it both ways. So basically, all you're going to do, every score line on there, you are going to fold in both directions, okay? And there are several. You'll see them. So once you've got them all folded both ways, then you can flip it over and put these four large pieces on the back. If you want to ink your edges, and I did this in pink. Normally I would use like a brown or a photo type or something just very light that goes with my cardstock. I did this so that you guys could see it. You know, kind of like a tea stain is what I, the effect that I like, but do what you like. You can use color, you can use whatever you want. I just did this one so you guys could see the inking. So once you've got those on the back, then you can flip it over. And keep in mind, whatever are on these three points are going to show on the front. This point will not show on the front when it's closed. Okay, just so you guys can see. When it's closed, those are the only points that show. So put your points on, and the reason mine doesn't have the roses on the front is because I went ahead and stuck one down wrong and had to reverse it. But in the file, I do allow for two different, actually three different colors. This would be solids, um, this would be solid and these would be pattern, and this would be a different pattern. I think that's the way I laid the file out. But you can do it any way you want. Make it your own. Hi, Wanda. So once you have everything folded, and you folded everything backwards and forwards twice, and then at the, on the front, and, and it's in the file too, you can look, you've put everything down like you wanted it. All of these. 
Then you can fold, and you can do this before you do that. You want to come and turn your paper in this direction so you have a point towards you, okay? You're going to fold up that side, and it will create a memory for you, and fold up the other side, and then you're just going to use your fingers, and you're going to pinch these together, okay? And bring them in so that you can flatten it down good and flat and then you're going to fold that corner back. And you're going to do that on all four corners. So when you do that, after you've done it a couple of times, it will create a memory for you. And all you have to do is just kind of pull them in. And that's it. That's all there is to that card. Very easy to fold. If you get stuck at any point, message me and I will walk you through. I will bring this out and do you a short video and show you which direction to fold. So let's go ahead and get started putting together this card. Let me move this out of the way. It's a little too close. This is what I call a sh uh, shaker slider. I I'm pretty sure this was Stampin' Up. I can't, I can't remember the girl's name, and I can't read my writing on my notes. It looks like Nicole Turgel or Turgel or I don't remember, but I got the inspiration from her on this card, um, and then I added some features and made it my own and used Design Space shapes rather than punches that she used to make the card. And this file has also been uploaded for you patrons. And I've got some little glow-in-the-dark Nouveau drops down here for eyes in the spooky, which were not on camera yesterday. And I still haven't done the inside, but on my the this one I have the little eyes in the windows here with also the glow-in-the-dark Nouveau drops. All of these are in there. I used on this file here the sea glass from Elizabeth Crafts. Um, it kind of looks like cobblestone or a stone front, you know, kind of spooky looking. You can use wood or brick, but if you want that folder, uh, because a lot of people were asking me about it, this is not an affiliate, um, but if you want that folder, you can get it from Elizabeth Craft. Right now it is $2.95. Okay, I bought mine at a craft show, so I don't. This is the only place I could find it. Amazon doesn't have it. Blitzy doesn't have it. Scrapbook doesn't have it. Um, I checked two or three other places, and the only place I could find it was straight from Elizabeth Craft. So, and it's called ElizabethCraftDesigns.com, and it's two ninety five. It may be discontinued, or they may be discontinuing it, and that's why it's on sale. And I don't know how many they have left. So if you want it, then you'll need to go over there and, and grab it. So let's go back over. But when you open this card, and I put a little piece here so you could pull on it and kind of open the card up. But it just slides. It doesn't go anywhere. It just stays in there and slides. You can open it completely this way. You can stamp your invite or whatever you want. My washi tape is coming up. You can put stamp an invite if you're doing invitations here. i got to put my little eyeballs on there. And then when you close it, it does close back up. Okay? So we're going to put this together tonight. And it has little shakers in it. On this one, I did use Spellcast. This is from Pink Paisley. Uh, again, I bought this, I don't know, at a craft show, and it has a, a lot of Halloween-type papers in it, but you can get any of the Halloween-type papers to use for that. Hey, Ann. For this card, you're going to need to cut it, and I went over, mine wasn't dark enough, I went over mine with a black, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, um, Spectrum Noir Sparkle. So I went over it with that. I did cover the edges of my cardstock so that white wouldn't be shown with my black Copics. And I used my Distress Orange on my shutters. 
this is print and cut and to me it wasn't dark enough I added a little bit of sparkle to it so make this your own do it the way that you want and I use this as a cover just for the back of this because it's white and it might bleed through but you don't have to have that and for time's sake I, instead of using glue guys I am going to use my Tombow on this just to put these together you want to use glue because you need that wiggle room because this does need to line up exact and I, that's the bottom the bottom has a wider piece right here so you can tell but these pieces do need to line up perfectly and I'm putting the window piece on this and this is just cut from transparency is that the right way it is And y'all get to see me fight with this, as I often do. And stick that down. And you're going to make a shaker out of this. And what I did is I used my foam tape. And if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. This tool from Cricut and this tool from Cricut, awesome. Instead of having to fight this with my scissors sticking to it and all of that, I simply laid it down on my mat. I just took a strip and laid it down and stuck it straight to my mat. I put this bar on there, and then I ran my true control knife right down there. I got one, two, three, four, five strips, and one of them's a little bit wide, but I couldn't make it any narrower. But you can see how narrowly that it cut those strips and they're perfect so handy dandy I highly 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 recommend getting one of those the best glue poochie is art glitter that's what I use normally so I use it for just about everything so you're then going to take and you don't have to do the whole shaker part I just did up above the top of the window because you don't need the shaker part going down below you, it's not going to be seen down there anyway and that true control knife made this perfect for the size that I needed for this window and you just want to close up these holes just so your sequins and or beads or whatever it is that you use in there cannot escape make it kind of thick so that your shakers have room to move but I'm just using flat sequins in this And then I just mixed up some orange and green, different, just a different combo, and just get a few colors in there, Halloween colors. Put a few in. And if you want, you can take a little dab of glue so that some stay in place through the windows when when the card is standing up so everything doesn't fall to the bottom you can just if I can get hold of it see if I can get one there we go oh, well there's a drop of glue whatever sticks sticks and then you're just going to line up your little window. I'm a little bit off, but I think it'll be okay. Make sure you get your straight for time purposes. I'm just going to trim this off. I'm not going to keep fighting it and try to get that off of there. Then you have 
this piece. This is the front. I took one of my shutters and just a little drop of glue on the corner. Just so they have something to pull. And you can put this on in any direction. Just kind of looks cool when the card is open. And then the other, just going to lay that right in there. Right about where it goes. Now I'm going to kind of stick this one down without getting in the hole and going over. You just want to get it in there. I'll trim the bottom of this off too, where I got it off. Wasn't off much, but just enough to make it hang up when it goes to slide. There we go. So that part you can set aside for right now. And then you want to take this piece and you're going to Z fold it. There are two score lines in it. And again, I used a Copic marker and went around the edges so the white edge didn't show. I, I did print and cut on mine so that my colors would match up. And if you're going to stamp it with an invitation or a note or whatever, now's the time to stamp that there. And you can use any image on the inside here that you want. Um, the one that's in the file, this beware does not show up well, so you may want to take a pen or a marker and go over it a little bit more. I put the sparkle on this one, and it made it put whatever you want in there. And I just pop dotted this up. Kind of in the center there. Oops. Make sure that you're not in the way of the fold. If I can get it off there. There we go. There we go. And then you've got your Z fold. And I am going to use tearing tape on this instead of glue, guys. You can get this at Joann's, Michael's, just about everywhere. Hobby Lobby. And it's just a two-sided tape. And you're not going to go past your fold, your score. And then we're just going to peel that up. Oh, I'm at the bottom of the screen. I'm sorry, guys. Let me see if I can adjust. I do apologize for that. Out of reach. So I'm using a straight pen. So there we go. Get that off of there. Got some ink on there. So once you have that done, up. And give it a good press. I just want to make sure that I have it even and I'm going to press that down. And we're going to fold that back. And you're just going to keep it pressed flat and close the front here. And it will relax after a few. I'm just going to tear some more tape off. You don't want the tape to go over onto the card base. And, but you want to stay on that, in that area doesn't take a lot. It's not going to have a lot of stress on it. It's a pretty quick card. It goes together really fast. 
And you could do this. This would be really cute with the window for Christmas. And um, I'm just going to. I should have already done this part. I'm just going to do it this way. Um, you could do like a window for Christmas and a fireplace on the inside. That would be so cute. This piece needs to be put on and lined up exactly. So I am going to suggest that you use a glue here, a wet glue, so you have room to maneuver and get this piece on there where it's supposed to be. And I embossed this backwards, but it is what it is. The other one I did the right way. This one I did backwards. And you're just going to lay that in there and wiggle it into place making sure everything is lined up perfectly. Okay, fold that with your tear tape that's on it back. Take your window and line it up in there and press it down. And this one is gonna be loose because I trimmed off for time purposes, but that's the way it does go together. Let me bring the, the right one over here so that when you open it up, it's kind of snug in there, but it will move, and you can slide it, just like so. Yeah, you don't want to have to trim it like I did. Like I said, that's going to make it loose in there, and it's going to flop. And I knew it was going to do that when I trimmed it, but I had to trim it because I knew it would just jam in there if I didn't. Because that was just to show you guys how to put it together anyway. This is the actual one that's done right. Because I didn't put my washi tape. You need to put your washi tape on this piece before you fold it or after you fold it. After is probably better. That way it won't be popping loose like mine's trying to do right there but I just used some striped washi tape around the base. Only thing that's on internet. So, I mean, and the, but this card is very versatile, guys. You could do this with other shapes, too. I'm losing sequins from somewhere. But, um... Very, very, very versatile. You can put anything you want to print on the window, um, all sorts of things. I think snow in one for Christmas with a Christmas window would be so cute. I may have to do one. I don't know. Glow in the Dark Nouveau Drops, also Blitzy and uh, Scrapbook.com. Tear tape, you can get there. Your foam tape. If you need that, you can get that there. Sequins, all of those kind of things. So let's go ahead and do our winner winner chicken dinner draw. Right, do the window with some snow or anything. Um, sequins. Tilt that away from me so I can't see in it. The file will tell you on there, Joanne. Uh, I have score lines attached to everything. My projects I always have their score lines attached. So you don't have to do anything. Number 75. Let's see who number 75 is. Let me transition over so you guys can see. Bonnie Brandis. Bonnie, are you here? I saw you were here just a few minutes ago. I hope you're still here. Yeah, that's you, Bonnie. Yay. Bonnie does help me test files. She gets bored and asks me if there's anything that she can do to help me, and she tests files for me occasionally. So I'm happy that you won, and you can tell me, um, Bonnie, which uh, folder you want, and I will send you the code, and you can check out and get that, claim your prize. 
Put Bonnie's number back in the bucket for next week. All right, does anybody else have any more design space questions? Any project questions? Anything you're having a problem with? Yes, uh, Joanne, your number stays in the bucket. As long as you, even if you're not here, if I, the only way you lose your number is if I draw it and you don't claim it, then it goes back up for somebody else to grab and I erase your name off the board. That's the only time you lose your number. How Can I show how to fold the napkin card again? Sure. Let me come back over to the webcam project camera. Let me see if I can get this whole thing on. Guys, I don't mean to will you. I don't mean to shake you. I'm going to just try to give it more height. Is that better for this? Let's see if I'm trying to get the whole thing in the camera here for you guys. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So you're going to fold and then fold it back on all the score lines. Every score line gets folded both ways, just so you can create a memory on that. Once you have it folded and all of your pieces are in place, and I have an extra piece on mine because I messed up inking. I dropped my ink pad right in the middle of that while I was doing it, so I had to cut another piece to cover that. You've got your pieces on the back. So once you have it, turn it so that you have one of the corners pointing towards you. You're going to fold both of the big points, your two big points together, and it's going to lay flat like that in a square. Then you're folding that piece back. That's all there is to it. That's really all it is. And that's why I say go ahead and put your pieces on. That's going to help you with folding. Because then you know you're bringing your two corners in. And it's going to lay flat like that, and then you're going to pull that corner back. And you do that on all four corners. You're just bringing in, you're bringing in the big pieces to the center, and then just pushing these two folds together. And folding back and it will create a memory after you fold it two or three times and you can see that I mean this one basically will fold itself back up when just by pushing on it And that what who was who needed that once again? I want to make sure that we have Vicky. Did that clarify it, Vicky, or do you want me to show you one more? Great, great. Just remember, big points, big points go in. Any other questions for design space or project issues? Anybody having? Okay, guys, let's see what you can do with the Halloween card. Change it up. Make it your own. If you're do not, if you not a Patreon, please support me on Patreon. You get access to all my files. If you are not a patron and you need help create, creating a file, let me know, and I will tell you how you can go in and create that file using different shapes. You can use just a plain square, guys. It doesn't have to be a window. So you can use a square. I don't think a circle will work because it's going to get smaller on the sides. It has to be flat across the top, whatever shape you use. Flat across the top, flat across the bottom. Other than that, shape should work. 
your code so that you can check out and claim your prize. If you were the Patreon happy winner, uh, happy mail winner, um, that was Cindy King. Please uh, check your messenger. I'm going to send you a code too so that you can check it out. That's okay, Jamie. I'm glad you made it here at the end. Jamie has a new grandbaby. She is spending all her time with the new baby. Congratulations, Jamie. You, you deserve to spend all that time that you can with her. All right, you guys have a wonderful night, and I will get in touch with all my patrons, and I will get in touch with you, Bonnie, and we will get those prizes out to you guys. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the week. I'll see you next Monday. Special shout out. Thank you, Rhonda Morales, um, for supporting me on Patreon.